Okay, good day everyone. So for our next lecture, let me start with a case. So presenting to you a case of a 45-year-old man that was admitted to an Ohio emergency room for headache, fever, general muscle aches, and weakness. Laborator laboratory workup on his blood specimen revealed significantly elevated eosinophilia. The patient reported that he had gone on a camping and hunting trip the month before in Ontario, Canada. He shot and killed a black bear and brought several pounds of meat home. In the weeks before the onset of symptoms, he ate several meals that included the bear meat that they hunted. So you can see in your figure A, this shows what was seen in a stained section of the muscle biopsy taken from the deltoid area of the patient's left arm. Then the portions of the remaining bear meat were sent to CDC for examination. There were no parasites that were found in compression smears from the bear meat, but uh, they did a 100-gram portion of meat and they grounded it and digested in, a, in an acidic pepsin solution. The examination of the sediment revealed small numbers of the objects that is shown in figure B. So, for today's topic, we will going to discuss trichinella spiralis. So, Trichinella spiralis was uh, first investigated by Richard Owen, who described the insisted larvae. So, other Trichinella subspecies is your Trichinella pseudospiralis from mammals and birds worldwide, Trichinella nativa from Arctic bears, Trichinella nelsoni from African predators and scavengers, Trichinella britovi from Brightovi from carnivores of Europe and Western Asia, Trichinella papwe from wild and domestic pigs of Papua New Guinea and Thailand. So for your adult worm, they are whitish in color. The male goes up to 1.5 mm by 0.04 mm and they have a single testis. So for the female, they can go up to 3.5 mm by 0.6 mm and they have a single ovary. The drawing looks so beautiful. So for the larvae, they measure 80 to 120 micrometer by 5.6 micrometer. And in the muscle fiber, they measure uh, around 900 to 1,300 micrometer. So generally, the life cycle of the trichinella spiralis is after exposure to gastric acid and pepsin, the larvae will be released from the cyst and invade the small bowel mucosa where they develop into adult worms. Then the lifespan of the small bowel is about 4 weeks and after 1 week, the females release larvae that migrate to the striated muscles where they insist. So diagnosis is usually made on clinical symptoms and is confirmed by serology or identification of insisted or non-insisted larvae in biopsy or autopsy specimen. Okay, so here is your life cycle. So what is your sylvatic cycle? So this is the fraction of the pathogen uh, population's lifespan spent cycling between your wild vectors and your host. While your domestic cycle naman is the cycle between the vectors and humans so the infective once an infected infected insisted larvae enter the host through ingestion of yung mga raw or insufficiently cooked meat yan, the cyst are digested in the stomach and the larvae exist either in the stomach or in the small intestine so the larvae then burrow into the sub epithelium of the villi where they undergo four molts. So, molting is um, from the casting of exoskeleton. Then, the maturation takes about two days. Then, the adult worms begin to mate five to seven days post-infection. So, then the female produces eggs that grow into larvae in its uterus. So, after a few days, yung female worm, they deposit the larvae in your mucosa. Then the larvae penetrate the mucosa and they pass through your lymphatic system into the circulation and finally into your striated muscles. 
So in the mussels, the larvae grow and develop and after about 3 weeks, they start to coil into individual cysts. So encapsulation is completed 4 to 5 weeks after infection. The larva in the cyst remains viable no, for many years and the average lifespan of the insisted larva is about um, 5 to 10 years and you can survive for up to 40 years in humans. So in humans, the cal calcification of the collagen capsule in the infected muscle cell and the larva may occur. This process may be observed 6 to, 10, 6 to 12 months after infection and may lead to the destruction of or death of the larva. So for your epidemiology, global, globally, no, this is found worldwide, most commonly in parts of Europe and the U.S. So for Asia, this is seen in Vietnam, Malaysia, and Thailand. So for the clinical presentation of the patients, for light infections, they may be asymptomatic. So pag may intestinal invasion na, they can be accompanied by gastrointestinal symptoms, that's your diarrhea, abdominal pain, vomiting, and pag meron ng larval migration into muscle tissues, that is one week after infection, they can cause periorbital and facial edema, no, panghupong, conjunctivitis, fever, myalgias, splinter, hem splinter hemorrhages, rashes, and peripheral eosinophilia. So, occasional life-threatening manifestations, they include your myocarditis and your CNS involvement and pneumonitis. Larval insistment in your muscles, they causes myalgia. Myalgia is yung pananakit ng muscles mo and weakness. And followed by subsidence of your symptoms. Okay, sorry for that. And the suspicion of trichinolosis or trichinosis is based on history, clinical symptoms, and when you do your CBC, merong eosinophilia. And they can be confirmed by specific diagnostic tests, including antibody detection, muscle biopsy, and microscopy. So the biopsy will show this, no? can see the insisted larvae in your serrated muscles. So thank you for listening.